Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're creating more glass materials and sharing a few tips that will make them more realistic. Creating glass materials or V-ray materials is something I practice quite often as I try to understand countless V-ray settings. And as always, I learn something new, redoing things I've done before. So that's what this video is. I get to share what I couldn't in part 1 as well gives me a chance to answer some of your questions. Now V-ray part 1 is still a relevant video because of the in-depth explanation that I go over with some of the settings. So I have that link in the description as well as in the corner of the screen. So this is our setup. I have a very simple black grid material for our background. These group of spheres in the front are meant to test the reflection as well as the one in the back is meant to test the refractions. I've also placed a few rectangle lights around the glass panel so that this area is well lit. And I also have a studio HDRI from Chaos Cosmo. As for the panel itself, it's about 6 by 8 inches and you want to make sure to give this a thickness. As always, you want to make sure that all of the front faces are facing the camera so you can get the correct rendering results. So basically you want to avoid seeing any of the back face. If you want to follow along, this studio file is available for download in the description. Before we get started, if you could do me a favor, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification. This helps with the growth of the channel and so you don't have to miss the next time we drop a new video. So we're going to start with the typical glass material and work our way up. And if you're interested, there's a timestamp in the description so you can skip to a specific material. So let's create a new material, rename that material, apply to our object and move on to the settings. So the diffuse settings specifies the color of the material. And this is where we get a chance to use a texture. Typically, we change this to black, but eventually we're going to explore this settings for other examples. So for now, let's set this color to black. Moving on to the reflection, the reflection color activates the reflection and the specular highlights of the material. So you want to adjust this slider to white. You also want to leave the, the reflection glossiness to 1, so we can keep the sharp reflections and leave the Fresnels checked. As for the index of refraction, we want to keep it at 1.6 because it's within range of an I or R value for a glass material. Now the higher this value, the stronger the specular reflection, so use this according to what you're trying to achieve. Moving on to the refraction, this controls the refractions and the way light behaves when it travels through the material. And that's what the rest of these settings are for. So let's set that refraction color to white and leave the rest of the settings as they are. So these are the settings for a typical glass material. You can use this on a window or on glass cups and I might make minor adjustments depending on the object that it's being used on. So now we can move on to a different example. Back painted and spandrel glass are two completely different things when it comes to use and application. But one thing they have in common is that they're both clear glass painted on the backside. The idea is that you see both the clear glass properties and the solid back painted color together without any distortions. Back painted glass is used more in interiors for decorative purposes. So you might see it on the kitchen backsplash, back painted tabletops, and it's also very common in office spaces. As for spandrel glass, it's used more in exteriors to hide structural elements and other building components. So we already have a glass material as our base, but we need to use the diffuse settings to bring back the solid appearance of the material. And you can do that by going to the refraction settings and disabling it by changing this color back to black. And now we can go back to the diffuse color and select the color to be used on the backside. So 
So this is our result and to avoid the basic look, you can always increase the IOR value of the material to increase the specular highlights. Now let's suppose you liked any of these colors, you can get creative by matching the reflections to the solid color. So copy your diffuse color and paste it in the reflection color. Now we can edit and adjust some of these settings to make it a bit brighter. And with this you can achieve colored reflections that match your solid back color. This is a very simple material, so you can easily explore the settings for more options. Like using gradients between colors, using patterns and colors, using procedural textures. If you're crafty with Photoshop, you can come up with your own design. Black and white glass are simple and tricky at the same time, so we have to get a bit crafty with the settings. So this is the result we're trying to achieve, so not completely transparent, but we have to get this white or black shade as we look through the glass. So we have our clear glass as our base material, and we can start by looking at the refraction settings. If you wanted to create tinted glass, you will use the fog color and the depth slider to control the color of the refraction and its strength. So one might consider to use white in the fog color to achieve the same result. But notice that white is already used by default and nothing happens to the refraction. In fact, the refractions remain clear. And even if you use 100% black and adjust the depth slider, you still wouldn't get the desired result. So as far as we know, the fog color settings alone will not give you the correct results. So an optimal solution to create white glass would be to use the refraction color and diffuse settings together. So first you want to go into your diffuse and set this color to white. So keep in mind that your diffuse and refraction settings are linked. When you have your refractions at pure white, you completely disable the diffuse color. So the trick on the refractions is to set this color to light gray or somewhere between 80 to 95%. When you do this, you'll be able to see the white color we set on the diffuse and thus resulting in a white glass material. For the case of a black glass material, you can achieve it in one of two ways. One, you can set your diffuse color to black and set your refraction colors to light gray. The other way is to start from a clear glass as your base material. Your refractions should be at pure white and in your fall color, instead of using pure black, you can use a dark gray. With this setup, you should be able to adjust the strength of your fall color with a depth slider. Another question I get quite often is how do you create gradient white glass? So this is when your glass material has two tones. It could be between two colors or from color to clear glass. Now we can do this by going to the refraction settings and editing the refraction color. So in this texture slot, you want to select the gradient texture. As for the settings, you want to switch the type to V so that the effects runs vertical. As for the colors, you want it to be a transition between black and white, black exposing the diffuse color and white revealing the clear glass. And once you're done, you should have a result like this. But notice how my texture helper is already turned on and this is in case you're not getting the correct render results. If that is your case, you want to turn on the binding options of your material and switch the mode from auto to texture helper. With this, you should be able to see a texture around your panel. And in case you want to control the visibility, head over to the SketchUp material editor and adjust the opacity to 100%. And last, you want to use one of these mapping options in the V-Ray utility bar that best fits your object. 
Before we move on to the next material, I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning, wants to explore their creativity, and learn a new skill. If your focus is to improve your V-Ray skills, you might want to check this V-Ray 5 for SketchUp Masterclass by Manish Paul Simmons. In this class, you will learn everything there is to know about V-Ray, how to create interior renders, create V-Ray material, use V-Ray elements, and how to create realistic lighting. So if you're serious about achieving your goals this year, Skillshare is a great way to invest in yourself and in your personal growth. Skillshare classes are ad-free so you can stay in the zone. There are new premium classes launch each week so you will always have something new to discover. And their entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German. The first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start the year right and earn those new skills. So we want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Next we got mirror materials which are very easy to create with the main adjustments being made in the reflection settings. Starting with the basic material, we're going to take our diffuse color to black. And moving on to the reflection settings, you want to switch the reflection color to white. Leave the Fresnels checked, which is already done by default. Enable the index of refraction. And you can change this value to somewhere around 10 or greater. This is going to give you the sharp reflections across the surface, as well as maintaining the Fresnel property of the material. And another common question is how do you tint or color a mirror material? Now there's a couple of ways to go about it and you can decide which one is optimal for yourself. One is to add your color of choice to the reflection color. This is a very simple and direct way. The other way is to use the coating settings, which is basically a second reflection layer on top of your material. By using the coating settings, you have better control over the color and how much it influences the reflection of the material. You can also create an infinity mirror and I've linked that video on the corner of the screen as well as I'll have the link in the description. Wet glass is also very simple to create with the use of high quality water droplet textures. Now I gathered some of these from polygon.com and other websites so be sure to check the link in the description for some of these sites. So we already have our basic glass and we're going to add the water droplet textures as bump or normal map. So let's go into our bump settings, select bitmap and select your texture. You want to be sure to change the mode here to linear and you also want to make sure to change this mode to match. As for the strength of the bump, you can adjust this slider or you can change the value here. So this is our result and if it's not looking the way you want it to, and as a rule of thumb, anytime you're not using a diffuse texture, you should set a texture helper in the binding options of that material. So in this case, let's copy our bump map, turn the binding options on, set the mode to custom, and paste the texture here. Now you should be able to see the texture in the SketchUp viewport where you can scale and make other adjustments. And to finish things off, you can always add more realism to these materials by adding surface imperfections. So under the reflection settings is where we're going to add our texture in the glossiness settings. So this is our result depending on how it's looking on a preview. You may need to shift between the glossiness and roughness surface controls. And at any point you want to combine two imperfection textures, you can do so by wrapping them in the mix operator. 
so we already have the first texture loaded and you can load the second one here once that's done you want to select the best blending option so you can get the correct mixture of both textures and there you have it these are the results that we can get by mixing two textures and with this tip you can add imperfections to any of the materials that we've created before Hopefully my trials will help you to better understand viewer materials and if you learned something new from this video then I've achieved my goal. As always be sure to drop a comment down below on what you'd like to see next as a video suggestion. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.